Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to do a code review of our previous lesson in which we implemented iterators from scratch that'll work with the standard template library. So if you didn't watch that video and you want to go ahead and see the from scratch, how to write it, go ahead and watch that. But in this video, if you just want sort of the shortened compressed version and want to review some code, try yourself, then this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and dive into it and we'll go ahead and look at the source code for our iterators shortly here. So again, here is the iterator help page here, and we are gonna pay a little bit more attention to the iterator categories here, as far as understanding our implementation. So anyways, from the last time, what we implemented here was this data structure here uh, called a fixed size array, okay? And it takes in a type T, and basically the idea with this data structure is to just construct on the heap here some fixed size array here, however large you'd want it to be, and uh, then it will stay that size. So just a really simple data structure uh, that we have here. And the key was, again, for us to be implementing this iterator here. So I have a little example of what our code did here. Uh, I can compile it here. Let me show you how I compiled. Uh, let's go ahead and there's the compile line here. Uh, and then it just runs through a few different uh, style loops here. Okay, so you can see the result of our program. Let's go ahead actually down to the main and then we'll dive into the data structure. Uh, so again, the idea would be that I could use a vector or say our fixed size array and I could interchange these however I want, okay? So we could do this sort of C style loops uh, shown here, which is totally fine here, just using the size of the data structure if we have a way to get it. Uh, but even better, we can use uh, iterators here by obtaining the beginning and end and looping through our data structure and then accessing each element by dereferencing it or we can use algorithms such as for each or other things in the algorithms library. And then of course, the key here, range-based for loops, which are just so nice to look at. And I'm happy that we have them in modern C++. So anyways, this is just abstracting or essentially translating into something that looks more like uh, this style loop here with the iterators. So that's the code that we have there, but let's go ahead and look at our data structure here. Again, so we had this fixed size array which just has data and some capacity here. Uh, we have the constructor, a destructor to uh, free up our memory here that we allocate of whatever type it is, uh, and then a way to access some data and get the capacity. Now, the way that we, again, use our iterators is by doing a begin and the end here, okay? So again, the idea was that begin just returns our first element. So however we define that to be. And again, this could depend on our data structure. If I had some sort of linked list data structure, this might just be returning an iterator that points to the head of that data structure. Or if I have some array-based data structure, I'm just getting the zeroth element. And then something kind of interesting on the other hand for the end is that we're getting uh, the end element, but it's sort of one past the end element, okay? Um, it, it's sort of giving us the... Um, when we're doing this check, and we can think about how we use this here when we're saying, well, iterator is not equal to the end here, right? Did any sort of style of loop here. It's basically saying like, we're out of a valid memory location, okay? We're perhaps somewhere like uh, here for our end is where it's pointing, okay? Uh, it, it doesn't, in a contiguous data structure, this is probably what it looks like, right? We're, we're just literally one past the end in our data structure. Uh, in a linked data structure, I mean, this is effectively just pointing us to like, uh, you know, something that uh, is maybe not allocated. It's beyond the tail, for instance. It's just some memory that doesn't belong to our data structure, okay? Uh, so we might want to think about that a little bit if we have a linked data structure. Okay, but, uh, you know, so those are the two uh, member functions that we can implement. Now we could also write other functions like uh, maybe distance or advance or other things if we wanted, um, or a middle operation if we wanted to basically return an iterator. The, the power is in our hands to do this once we have our actual iterator. Now let's go ahead and talk about the iterator a little bit, just the structure here, uh, which I have a struct, which is nested within this class. Now why it's nested within this class for two reasons. Uh, one, um, because, well, I want to make sure that this iterator is working on, you know, the specific type of data for our data structure that's created here. Okay, so we can see the, the pointer type, other things that are important, like the, uh, the distance between the individual elements uh, we'd want to keep track of. 
Uh, so those are just a few of the things here. The other is that I just want to uh, make sure that if we are, again, creating this, we're creating specific instances that are uh, from the fixed size array here, okay? We could actually make this uh, class um, a class here. I, I chose to just make it a struct so that everything's uh, public. It's just a little easier to work with. Um, so nothing nothing too much on the design decision there. Uh, but anyways, that's the reason why it's a, it's a sort of nested uh, class, okay? Uh, we don't really want to be able to create the iterator outside of you know this class scope here. That's again, that's what happens when you have a nested class. So to create this, let's just go ahead and look at the example of creating this uh, in our code, right? I am doing. Uh, let's see if I actually did one down here. I don't think I did here, but what it would look like uh, when I have begin here. Uh, let's go ahead and just do. Like if I wanted an iterator, um, I'll just type it up here. Uh, so it's easy to see here um, for our iterator, right? Fixed size array, the type int, and then iterator, something like that here. Okay, and that's what begin and so on is uh, returning to us. Um, but again, uh, you know, we're just doing that. We have access to it in this class, and that's kind of nicely encapsulated in that way. Okay, so anyways, on the actual design of this iterator, the first real major decision that you have to make is how can this be used? Now, again, in the previous video, I just said, hey, I'm going to use this forward uh, iterator here. Uh, and it was a little bit lazy in a sense of, you know, if I have a contiguous data structure, I should be able to move forwards and backwards and so on in my data structure. OK, uh, so I could actually have more power. So let's go ahead and just look at that in this code review here, this category uh, and these categories here from the uh, iterator library right here. They are. Uh, we've talked about these again in a previous video, but let's just go ahead and click on uh, forward iterator here. And in order for me to make this distinguishment of, you know, how much power does my data structure have, you can actually scroll down here. Um, and again, I think we'll get to the C++ 20 stuff with concepts later on with iterator traits. But what I really just want to look at here for now are just these requirements here. OK, um, and this is sort of, um, you know, what do we need here? in order to have an iterator that can move forward from one element to the next here. OK, so we need to satisfy, uh, well, we've talked about this sort of forming a hierarchy. So if, I, uh, if I'm if i a forward iterator, I'm also an input iterator. OK, so I satisfy those requirements. That's what this is basically saying here. I satisfy the uh, input and, and so on. Um, but what's kind of interesting is if I just look at this table here, um, it is telling me what happens when I dereference and then do plus plus. It's telling me the return type. Or if I do I++, that we basically need to make a copy of our iterator, increment that copy, and then return it uh, as the new thing. So there's some interesting stuff going on here. Because again, in the last video, I just sort of guessed our way through the, uh, well, I didn't guess because I had an idea, but it's just showing you through the error messages why we're getting those sort of error messages. So what that's basically saying is, yeah, if we want this to be a forward iterator, then I need to implement, uh, let's go ahead and see, uh, I plus plus here. Let me find my operators. Uh, here they are. Operator plus plus uh, here. Okay, the one that returns a reference, and then the one uh, that returns a copy. And that's why I did it in this sort of weird way, where I was making a copy. Because you might have said, "Hey, Mike, why don't you just do plus plus on this?" Well, that's what we're satisfying for this one, right? It returns a reference, okay, um, of our iterator, uh, and this one uh, returns the copy. OK, which let's go ahead and just show that, right? That's This is exactly what I'm looking at uh, here when I'm doing this, right? Return the iterator and return reference. Uh, now, this is giving some other legalese here about basically telling me that it's returning an iterator here, um, OK, and what the type is of whatever our iterator is. OK, so that's how to read this a little bit here. So I mean, let's just look at this a little bit more here. I mean, let's go ahead and pick one that had more power, right? We could have done random access iterator. Um, but now I need to add some of these other things here, like plus equals operator. Um, and it's telling me, you know, how to do this, right? This sort of operational uh, semantics, which is uh, pretty neat here. Uh, how to move this, right? I think we need to implement other stuff like uh, less than, greater than, or equal to, and so on. Um, you know, we need to be able to access this. Uh, we have the return type, so some reference type here. Uh, the difference type is what I'm returning if I do B minus A. Um, so these are just a little bit of the things, again, these are your overloads that you need to add if you're going to tag your iterator as supporting this. Now, again, 
uh, where you get your power uh, from these tags will be later on uh, when we use things like algorithms. So for instance, uh, let me just give you a quick preview of this. Um, I, I know we're living in CPP reference right now, but if I look at the algorithms library and something like, um, uh, let's just click on one and see. Uh, yeah, all of or any of, it needs a input iterator, okay? So that means that what that tag's doing is telling us, hey, anything that's an input iterator or pow more powerful, uh, we can use in this particular algorithm, okay? So if I go to our iterators here, anything that's you know of this class, input iterator, I can use with that um, all of or any of function. I can use forward iterators, bidirectional, et cetera, because they all support at least this much uh, stuff. I can read and then I can increment without multiple passes. Okay, and you can see that all these other iterators uh, supply those requirements. Okay, so with that said, let's just go ahead and look at the rest of the code here. Again, that's a little bit of a tangent on you know how to just read some of this stuff and understand uh, how it works here. But for our iterator, we constructed it uh, and with a uh, pointer here. Okay, and the pointer was the thing that we were encapsulating. So uh, my actual iterator here, right? Here's my uh, fixed. Uh, what did I call it? Fixed size array. I really should call it like fixed size heap allocated array or something like that. With let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five elements. So we allocated it for six here. And my iterator, right? It's its own, you know, object that lives somewhere here, and it's got a pointer here. Okay, that's its uh, member function here. Let's actually just label it as it as M P T R. Uh, and for the constructor, uh, here. It just takes in, uh, well, a pointer to whatever the data type is. And again, here are my shortcuts here, T star. So whatever the type T is, again, just for this uh, moment here of our code review, uh, let's go ahead and just put in T star here, just so it's clear we're just uh, setting up a pointer here. Okay, so that's basically just saying, where is uh, our pointer pointing to? Maybe it's at the start. Maybe we could put it like at the middle somewhere or at the end, okay? And where we actually use that, again, uh, was in our uh, begin and end here. Let me get to the right spot here. Begin and end, right? We're constructing an iterator. That's what we're returning from begin and end. Anytime we call those functions, that's what we want to return. And again, it's just uh, giving us uh, from the internal data of this data structure, the zeroth element and then the last element. Okay, so if that was confusing, that's uh, how that works here, okay? Um, Okay, uh, let's see, what did I change here? Oh, uh, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and just move forward in time. There we are. Uh, undo, there we are. Okay, so now here comes our operations. Now, these operations, let's look at these again. Um, you know, how do I know when I'm dereferencing that I'm supposed to turn a reference to my pointer? Okay, and remember what the pointer is doing here. So let's just take a look at this. This pointer is pointing to some element here. Let's say if it's at the beginning. So if I dereference it, uh, right, when I do like star it or something or whatever your iterator is that's pointing to something, right, I, I want to get back from this pointer, this thing that I'm pointing to, the value here. So if this is an integer, right, I want the value seven back here. Okay, so let's see if we can look through our iterator categories. Let's start with legacy output iterator here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, actually, let me read through this. Let me see. I want to be able to read a value here. Uh, let's just do this here. Um, so I have star i, so I'm uh, dereferencing our iterator here. Uh, the return type, a reference, okay. Uh, so, you know, that's that's really it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to do here. <laughs> so that's how I know, you know, the, re the return type is just a uh, reference here, okay? That's the basic idea. And let's see if we can find uh, this arrow here. Let's see if it's explicitly uh, marked here. Here it is uh, as well. Okay, so it has to be dereferenceable. It's telling us what the equivalent expression was. Let's see, did we do something equivalent here? Uh, okay, and in this one, I'm just returning the actual uh, pointer here. Let's see here, what was I doing? Uh, I returned T star. Okay, so that seems that seems reasonable to me here. Uh, let's see, precondition i is dereferenceable, which we've uh, satisfied uh, that we can dereference it. Um, okay, that all seems pretty reasonable to me here. Um, and let's see what else here. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, I talked about this a little bit already with the uh, pre-increment and post-increment in our code. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can find here again, pre-increment, we've got the return type, the uh, reference here. And let's see, do we have post-increment here? Uh, let me see what this expression is, void. Let's go ahead and see input iterator. Let me see if I go to our forward iterator. I think that had it uh, more well-defined here. Ah, yeah, here it was. Uh, so this is why I, I essentially did, let's leave that on the page here, uh, get a copy of our iterator uh, for temp, which equals uh, our iterator, um, which is our current object. So I dereference it, uh, increment it. Okay, that's what I'm effectively doing here at line 64, and then return our uh, copy, uh, which is what I did here. Okay, so that's just, uh, you know, how we follow this. Uh, now, as far as testing if the two iterators are equal, because that's something that we need to do here, right? We're constantly in our loop saying like, hey, uh, our iterator equals the begin, and is it, uh, well, it's not equal to the end. Thus, uh, you know, we can sort of negate this. Uh, I'm just testing if our iterators, however they're defined, right? I could define this, again, for this data structure, just a design thing, I could have designed this as a single integer, but, you know, for me, I'm just testing, you know, are the pointers uh, equivalent here or, or storing the same address? And if they are, they must be pointing to the same thing, okay? Uh, and as I mentioned, the compiler should be smart enough to generate the not equals uh, here for you if you define equals. I think it just literally negates, you know, what this is returning. Um, I'll have to look at that on CPP Insights or something. Uh, but, but again, I usually just like to explicitly define them, okay? So you can have them uh, there. Okay, so that's really the code in the review here. Uh, and just to show it all at once uh, for designing uh, an iterator, and you can read through some of the uh, comments here uh, if you like here. So anyways, here's the whole code. I'm just going to scroll through it slowly, and you can pause if you need. Um, but kind of, again, setting us up for some tags here, uh, our iterator doing the actual work and we learn where to do the work from by looking at cpp reference and from these expressions in reality it's probably also useful just to look at some other code that folks have written or look at the standard template library right that'll be a good study spot here uh, so there's the rest of our iterator and then here's our actual data structure doing work with the important begin and end which return us iterators uh, that we need here okay and then you could do whatever the rest of the operations are in your data structure that you need okay and then here's just the example again showing that we can swap out something like a std vector with our data structure uh, and that's really all there is to it all right folks with that said uh, i will post this lesson uh, on my courses page here where you can track your progress this is uh, free to enroll in right now so make sure to take advantage of that thank you to my members and subscribers for their support on this channel and i hope this was useful i hope this helps clear up at least some of the questions regarding um, how to work with iterators and some of these things here. And as always, folks, thank you for your time and attention watching this video, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.